Baron Cohen et al. 1997 Autism in Adults Background Autism Spectrum Disorder, or Autism for short, is a neurodevelopmental disorder affecting around 1 in 100 people, which is generally characterised by finding it difficult to communicate and interact with people, understanding how other people think or feel, and dealing with unfamiliar situations and social events. Autism is not an illness, it just means that an autistic person's brain works in a different way. However, the social deficits which it is characterised by mean that they can often struggle to understand others' intentions and thoughts. This decreased cognitive process was named the theory of mind by psychologist Simon Baron Cohen. To describe the phenomenon of mind blindness, whereby people with autism find it difficult to understand different mental states. However, autism is also a spectrum disorder, which means that there are varying degrees to which individuals are affected. Some autistic people have large deficits in relation to social skills and theory of mind, whereas people with Asperger's syndrome, which is a type of autism, may have similar symptoms but less severe, and can be very high functioning, requiring little or no support. To accurately measure theory of mind in people with autism, the researchers in Baron Cohen's study devised a test called Reading the Mind in the Eyes task. The test involved participants having to label the emotion of others based on photos of their eye expressions only. The researchers in Baron Cohen's study devised an experiment to establish the validity of the test in being able to detect deficits of theory of mind in autistic people. AIM The researchers' primary aim was to find out whether the reading the mind in the eyes task could successfully detect deficits in theory of mind in individuals with autistic spectrum disorder. A secondary aim of the experiment was to discover whether any gender differences exist in theory of mind abilities in neurotypical people. Sample the study consisted of three groups of participants. The first was a group of 16 individuals who had high-functioning autism, or Asperger's syndrome. 13 members of this group were male, and three were female. All participants in this group were of at least normal intelligence, which was tested using the Vexler Adult Intelligence Test, and were recruited via volunteer sampling through an advertisement in the National Autistic Magazine, and a variety of other clinical sources. The second group in the experiment consisted of 50 neurotypical adults, who were all matched for age and split evenly by sex with 25 males and 25 female individuals. The participants in this group were collected via a random sample from the general population around Cambridge in the UK. The third group comprised of 10 adult individuals with Tourette syndrome, a condition that causes people to make involuntary sounds and movements called tics. All participants in the group were age matched with the first two groups, and of normal intelligence measured by the Veschler Adult Intelligence Test. The sample was recruited using snowball sampling via a tertiary referral centre in London. The participants in the autistic and Tourette's groups were selected for being able to pass two first-order false belief tasks and one second-order false belief task in order to establish that they at least had the mind-reading skills of a normal six-year-old. Methodology The study was a quasi-experiment since the independent variable was naturally occurring and was not manipulated by the experimenters. The independent variables in the study were the neurological conditions of the participants, whether they had autism, Tourette's, or were neurotypical. The dependent variable was the performance of participants on the eyes task out of a possible score of 25. Two control tasks were also conducted, which included the gender recognition task and the basic emotion recognition task. Each of the tasks were presented in randomised order to all participants to help minimise any order effects. Procedure Participants were tested individually on each of the tasks in a quiet environment, either at their own home or at a university laboratory. The eyes task consisted of photos of the eye region of 25 separate faces, both male and female. All the photos were standardised to be the same size, black and white, and with the same region of the face shown, from the bridge of the nose to just above the eyebrows. Each of the photos was shown for a duration of three seconds, and then the participants were given a choice between two mental state terms, which were printed under the photo. The experimenters asked the participant which word describes what this person is feeling or thinking. The targeted words associated with each pair of eyes was devised by four judges, two male and two female, through an open discussion. Each target word was paired with a foil word, which was the semantic opposite of the target word. These words were then tested on a panel of eight judges, four male and four female, who rated the accuracy of the words, but who were blind to the study's hypothesis and purpose. The gender recognition task involved participants looking at the same set of eyes in the eyes task, but simply identifying the sex of each person in the photographs. The basic emotion recognition task involved participants looking at whole faces which displayed basic emotions based on Ekman's category of facial expressions and identifying the emotions shown on each face. A total of six faces were used, including happy, sad, angry, disgust, and surprise. 
Results. The finding of the ICE task revealed that both the control group and the Tourette's group performed significantly better than the group with autism, with the control group scoring an average of 20.3 out of 25, the Tourette's group scoring an average of 20.4 out of 25, and the autistic group scoring an average of 16.3 out of 25. Within the autism group, it was found that there was no relationship between IQ and the performance on the eyes task. On the basic emotions recognition task and gender recognition task, there were no significant differences between any of the three groups of participants. However, on the strange stories task, the autism group made significantly more errors than the other two groups. In the neurotypical control group, it was found that female participants performed significantly better than male participants, with females scoring an average of 21.8 out of 25 and males scoring an average of 18.8 out of 25. Conclusions The researchers concluded that their hypothesis that autistic people would be impaired by the theory of mind test was proven to be correct, and also that their prediction that neurotypical females would perform significantly better on the theory of mind test than neurotypical males was also correct. The researchers noted that the impairment in the theory of mind abilities among those with autism could not be accounted for because of the IQ, because they were all in a normal or above normal range, and the results showed no significant correlation of performance with IQ. Some of the participants in the autism group had university degrees, suggesting that this particular aspect of their social cognition is independent of general intelligence. They also concluded that the impairment could not have been as a result of having any neurodevelopmental disorder, since the participants with Tourette's syndrome were unimpaired on the eyes task. Since the deficit on the eyes task was not mirrored in the results from the two control tasks, the researchers also concluded that the impairment could not have been due to extraneous variables such as the stimuli being eyes, deficits in inferring social information from minimal cues, or other perceptual or recognition deficits. The researchers also interpreted the results as providing evidence that there are subtle deficits in theory of mind in autistic individuals later in life, at a higher point on the IQ's continuum, than had been previously demonstrated. In relation to the sex differences that were found within the neurotypical group, the researchers postulated that perhaps there are differences in the rate of development in theory of mind between the sexes in early childhood, and that these differences could reflect genetic or socialisation factors, which would need to be tested in further research. Evaluations. The study was a highly controlled experiment with a standardised procedure used in each task. Each group of the participants were matched for age and IQ, measured by the Vetchler Adult Intelligence Test. This ensured a high level of internal validity. There was also a high level of construct validity because the eyes task was purely a test of theory of mind. The fact that only the eyes were shown to the participants rather than the full face meant that there was no additional contextual information to help participants deduce what each pair of eyes were thinking or feeling. The gender recognition task and the basic emotion recognition task both also helped to rule out any extraneous variables, such as deficits in face perception or basic emotion expression recognition. In addition, the results showed that those in the autistic group also had impairments on the strange stories task, which provided concurrent validity that the eyes task was indeed measuring theory of mind. However, one could argue that the study was relatively low in ecological validity, because the eyes task is a lot simpler than the demands of a real-life social situation. The stimuli presented to the participants was completely static in a way that the real social world is not. Despite this, the highly controlled procedure meant that the study was highly replicable and reliable. Interrater reliability was achieved through the use of an independent team of judges to establish that the target words and foil words used in the eyes task were a valid representation of each set of eyes. One possible downside of the sample used, however, was the limited size and location that the sample was recruited from. There were only 16 individuals in the autistic group, which was relatively small and ethnocentric, which may therefore not be considered representative of a wider population, making it difficult to generalise the results. The study was high in usefulness, since the results broke new ground in establishing that deficits in theory of mind exist later in life and further along the IQ continuum than had been previously measured and open the possibility of further research to investigate differences in theory of mind between the sexes in early childhood, including any genetic or social factors that may be an influence. The study had a high ethical standard, ensuring that the participants were protected from harm for the duration of the experiment. In particular, participants were allowed to take each of the tests from the comfort of their own home, which helped to mitigate stress amongst the participants with autism, who may be very uncomfortable in unfamiliar settings such as a laboratory.